which is um, a little bit maybe half challenging. Oh, uh, well, we love those. <laughs> controversy. Everybody likes controversy. <laughs> Local devotees will understand why. And uh, the question is, uh, is it okay uh, to read from the scripture during prasadam hours? Um, yeah. Why would that be controversial? Because I was voted out. Uh, I was doing it uh, maybe once a month, but uh, this activity was voted out in a brahmachari meeting. And well, this is what happened in, in, in all the temples I was in when Prabhupada was on the planet. But in other words, when I lived in a brahmachari ashram. That every time we sat down to take prasadam, and they still do it in some temples, they do it in LA, for example, where I spent some years. They take prasadam, and someone <coughs> reads Krishna book. Or they read whatever the book they want. In those days, it was Krishna book. Someone reads, they do it in Delhi temple. If you take prasadam in Delhi temple today, someone reads. Of course, it's in Hindi, and I don't understand Hindi, but I remember when I was in Bombay, and Prabhupada gave classes in Hindi, he asked us to stay. I know you don't understand, but the sound vibration is purified. So if the sound vibration is purifying when you don't understand the language, then what to speak of when you do understand the language? So you take prasadam and you hear Krishna Kata. Why is that controversial? I don't get it. Anyway, I think it's, it's always been done. So it must be bona fide. Any question? Yes. Yeah, um, so I have a question regarding um, chanting Japa. Um, you mentioned how um, when we hear, we should try and avoid the mind. And I think there's references where Prabhupada says that when we chant, there's no question of the mind. We just hear. But then also That's exactly true. The mind has to be peaceful and calm. But then there's also uh, suggestions uh, when chanting that we try and meditate on the meaning, the literal translation, and also often there's you know, the devotees that write books and prayers on the, the glories of the holy name. Or sometimes devotees will look at a picture while they chant. Is, is, is one of these equally. You know, Have you ever been to a movie? Are you focused on the story, completely captivated? Are you thinking? Are you spacing out during the movie? No. Similarly, if you chant looking at a photo or actually looking at Radhananda Nishwara, where is the question of thinking? But if you're reading Shastra, then you're multitasking. Men are very good at multitasking. Mm. Reading and thinking and chanting all at the same time. Better just to look. Look at a picture or look at actual Radhananda Nishwar. I close my eyes, except when I'm walking. When I'm pacing back and forth, I keep my eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm sitting down, I close my eyes because everything I see is material energy. When I close my eyes, I hear better. <clears throat> And I can get more into the heart aspect of chanting. But then someone raised their hand at, at one time when I said that and said, well, when I close my eyes, I fall asleep. Well, then for you, maybe you shouldn't close your eyes. Maybe you should stand up and chant. Maybe you should go to bed earlier the night before, you know. So you have to, this is, a, this is part of your sadhana. You've got to figure out a strategy how you can do your service at the best, whatever it takes. I get up earlier, I, I mean, I, I go to sleep earlier, you know, I close my eyes, I just focus on the deities, whatever it is, that when I chant Hare Krishna, I'm focused and I'm not thinking. So you have to come up with a strategy that works for you, because we're all individual. What works for me may not work for you. So that's called being conscious, being aware, or being conscious. And Prabhupada told me, first become conscious, then you can become Krishna conscious. He said, don't be Krishna unconscious. Doing thinking, doing things, things without being aware. Okay? So you meditate on that and come up with the strategies. 
that works for you, okay? Thank you. You had a question? Uh, uh, if I turn jeopardy uh, with my closed eyes, is it okay to go to the sea? Is it okay to what? Visualize? Yeah, if you're good at visualizing, that's terrific. If you can see Krishna when you're chanting, then I'll put the dust on your feet and put it on my head. Yeah, if, if, my, if I close my eyes, then other people might think that I'm falling asleep and it's like I'm better listener. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what can I do? I want to close my eyes and so better listen, but people think you know, they want to, you know, they think, oh, I fall asleep. So, like. so what he's saying is that when he closes his eyes, people say, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they think he's sleeping. Tell them to mind their own business. <laughs> Because they don't know what japa is. Japa means it's your personal quality time with Krishna, just you and Krishna. It's not a group activity like kirtan. You may have different people in the room all having their personal association with Krishna. But it's their private time with Krishna. It's not a group activity we all do together. It's your private time with Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> Shula Prabhupada. Yeah. Praise Vyasa Gipramukhi. Yeah. <coughs>